Last year I made a Dragon Ball Z power-up effect tutorial that was made through 3D shapes and I'm generally satisfied with the result, but for this week I'd like to show you how we can create a power-up effect in Blender in 2D thanks to Alpha Cards with a little animation I've created with this Mixamo rig. For those who might not be familiar with Alpha Cards, they're a technique used in 3D art to add details with as little polygons as possible. Essentially, you have a plane with a black and white image of a silhouette, the black part will be rendered transparent, and the white part will be shown in this way, you can have a complex shape in your scene with very little computation power. And that's how we'll be creating today's 2D Dragon Ball Z power-up effect. If you're already a 2D artist, feel free to create your own alpha card to use, but if you want to provide it to you, click on the link in my description to download it for free. The first thing we want to do is importing the alpha card into Blender by pressing Shift A and importing the image as a plane. Now since we'll be animating that plane, it's important to know the source of the movement, and in the case of the power up, the source of the movement will be from the bottom center. So press Ctrl plus dot or go to the options menu on the upper right hand corner and select effect only origins. This axis will show up and now you'll be moving the origin point only. I'll put it in the bottom center and then disable the effect only origins option or press Ctrl plus dot again. The axes should now disappear. Now scale the plane up and down to make sure it's doing so from the bottom center. It'll become very important afterwards. Before we start, make sure you're working with the EV render engine. So, we'll be animating the alpha card power up on two different levels, starting from the shader editor and later by adding a simple deform modifier. We'll start with the shader editor. Add a mixed shader node in addition of an emission node and a transparent node, and plug them as such. Next, plug the image texture node into the factor socket of the mixed shader node, just like that. Now press N in the shader editor to open the sidebar settings and go into the options tab and set the blend mode to alpha clip. Now the transparency should be activated. If you're getting inverted results where the power up is being transparent and getting cut out, simply add an invert node between the image texture node and the mixed shader node and set the value to 1 and you get the right results. Now, if you're getting a weird outline around the image plane, add a color ramp node between the image texture node and the invert node and adjust the sliders as such to get rid of them. Use the emission shader to set up your desired color to the power up. Next, we want to distort the power image as such. And this is the node setup to achieve the result. What we're essentially doing is using this wave texture node to distort the power up image. Let me break it down. First, add a texture coordinate node and plug its UV socket into a separate color node. Now you're going to get three different colors which represent each different color channel. Red, green, and blue. Red represents the x-axis on the image texture, green represents the y-axis of the image texture, and blue represents the z-axis of the image texture. Now since the power-up will be animated moving upwards, this means we simply want to animate the wave texture distortion on the y-axis. The other axes aren't needed in this case, which is why we're separating them so we can isolate and control the y-axis on its own, and we'll then recombine all of them with a combined color node and have it connect to the color ramp node after the wave texture node to have a bit more control with the sliders. These are the settings I have set up for the distortion. But I highly recommend you play around a little with the settings to get your desired results. To animate the wave texture and have it move, make sure to write hashtag frame forward slash minus one and the phase offset factor to create a driver that will animate it infinitely. Also, you won't get the full grasp of the setup until you experiment a little, so make sure to play with the factor's values. This will be the complete final node setup. I'd also like to recommend a video from Pierrick from P2 Design that explains this concept as well. Pierrick is able to explain it in even more depth. Now that we're done with the shader editor, we'll give the power up a wild explosive animation. This is actually a very simple and procedural way to achieve this. Add a simple deform modifier to the image plane and select the stretch feature. Choose X as your axis and add just one keyframe to the factor parameter. Now go in the graph editor and select the factor curve. Press N in the graph editor to view the sidebar options and go to the modifier tab and add a noise modifier. Adjust the strength to your liking and there you go. You now have this wild and dynamic animation to your power up. What I like to do is to duplicate that mesh and move it ever so slightly forward and scale it down a little bit. In the shader editor, I'll duplicate the shader by pressing here and changing the color to add some variation. Then I'll go into the graph editor and go to the modifier tab and change the offset value to one just so that there's also some variation in the animation and there you go. The core of the power up animation is done. Next, we'll cover the ground impact. The ground impact is a simple stylized effect that shows energy being pushed outwards around the power-up. 
It's very simple to achieve. First add a circle and extrude its edges upwards to have this open cylinder shape. Then scale the lower edge inwards and the higher edge outwards to create a bit of a conic shape. Then select each vertex individually and double press G to activate edge slide and lower each vertex down as such to create this triangular saw pattern. Feel free to also move those vertices up and down randomly to create different heights. It generally looks a little more interesting that way. Its shading is very simple. There it is. It's a gradient texture rotated to 90 degrees, hooked up on a color ramp node with the color set that is connected to an emission node. As for the animation, we'll do exactly what we've done with the power up planes. We'll add a simple deform modifier set to stretch. This time, set the axis to Z and add one keyframe to the factor parameter. Go into the graph editor and add a noise texture and adjust the strength to your liking. Then animate the rotation of the mesh by adding two keyframes set to the length of your animation to have it swirl around. Now moving on to the final effect, the lightning sparks around the character. So since we're doing a power-up effect with planes, I thought I'd do the same with the lightning sparks without having to resort to any complicated mesh or techniques. So step one, add a plane to the scene and place it in front of your character. Everything else will be done in the shader editor. So create a new material and begin by adding the usual mix shader, emission, and transparent node setup and hook them up together. Add a Voronoi node and add it to a texture coordinate and mapping nodes and then connect it to a color ramp node. In the mapping node, scale down and squash the texture and play with the sliders off the color ramp until you get lightning shapes and white as such. Now, we don't want the lightning to fill out the entire plane. We want a gradual fall off around the edges. So we'll add a gradient texture node and add it to the usual texture coordinate and mapping nodes and hook it onto a color ramp node. Then connect both color ramp nodes together on a mixed color node and set the blend mode to multiply and the factor value to one. Back to the gradient nodes color ramp, we will add a third slider and have a white slider in the middle between two black sliders on each side. This means that the lightning we created with the Voronoi texture node will be only visible in the white section of the gradient node and everything in the black section will gradually become transparent as such. Lastly, set the color of your sparks in the emission node and we'll now animate the sparks. There are two drivers for this animation. The first one is in the mapping node. We'll type the usual animation line hashtag frame forward slash minus six and the location's y-axis. This will make the lightning sparks move upwards. Then we'll type hashtag frame forward slash six this time in the W factor of the Voronoi texture node. This will simply make the lightning move in random patterns. Now the thing about lightning is that it moves in very quick, static, and sudden movements. It's not fluid like fire or water, for example. So to create this effect, we'll step the animation curve for each animation driver we just created. To do this, right click on the purple drivers and select open drivers editor. A new window will pop up. If no curve is showing, make sure that the node which contains the driver is selected in the shader editor. And if it still doesn't show up, make sure the correct mesh, in this case, the plane, is selected in the viewport. With the curve showing, go to the sidebar options and click on the modifiers tab. Add a stepped interpolation modifier and set the step size to around one. And now you'll notice that the lightning is moving up in a static manner. Now go in the Voronoi texture node and open the driver's editor on the W factor and do the exact same thing. And there you go. You now have a complete power-up effect driven by alpha cards. If you have any questions about the process, let me know in the comment section below and I'll answer you as fast as possible. Peace.